So this plate carrier is great, and when I got it, I knew it wasn't going to be my end-all be-all. It was still in my affordability wheelhouse, and so I bought it, but I knew I was still gonna upgrade. This plate carrier is good, but when I first put it on, I knew that the shoulder straps were cutting into me a little bit, and at the end of the day, all of this was an educational experience. I spent a lot of time and money playing with things just to figure out what I do and don't like in a plate carrier. And I did the same thing with rifles and pistols and belts, but today we're gonna to talk about a JPC 2.0 and an LMT rifle. Okay, now, the JPC 2.0 has been a staple in the industry for a long time. A lot of people recognize it and know that it is a very quality carrier. And because of that, I wanted to buy one for the longest time. Since I got into this stuff, I knew that I wanted a JPC or a cry plate carrier of some kind. Now, during my educational experience, I kept buying other things that still didn't measure up to something like this. And if I could go back and tell myself, yeah, man, you know you have an end goal with a plate carrier. You have an end goal with a rifle, but you keep spending money on things that still don't quite cut the mustard, so to speak. So here's what I would tell myself if I could go back. All right, get yourself a plate carrier, something that mimics this to a degree, or maybe even just a chest rig. Something you can afford and get a lot of training with. Those are the big two things. Spend time and invest. Maybe you can only afford a set of plates that are at a price point, but they're heavy and they're bulky and they're not what you ultimately want. Start with it. Get a lot of reps. And then as you continue to grow, make a change and keep those plates, but go to a better plate carrier like a JPC 2.0. Or maybe in rifle terms, let's say that you have a build like a Springfield Saint or Smith & Wesson Sport 2, and you wanna shoot that thing for a long time, you get a lot of good experience and training. Well, here's the thing, as you shoot a rifle, the part that wears down the most is going to be your bolt and your barrel. As it just so happens, those are on the top half. And as it just so happens again, the uppers are not serialized. So, here's a game plan for you. Buy a cheap-ish rifle, shoot the heck out of it, and then when you can afford another rifle, don't go buy another rifle go buy another upper and run it on your functional lower that you've been shooting for a little while. If you need to change out springs in the buffer, if you need to change out the trigger and upgrade that, you certainly can. But now you're getting experience and building gear in a way that is actually benefiting you in the long run. So here's what I did with a JPC 2.0 after years of experimenting and spending money on stuff that I knew I didn't actually want or need. It's a stock uh, plate carrier standard cummerbund that comes with it. I have a tourniquet on the right hand side with enough space for my, my pistol to still come out. And I have a GP pouch, general purpose on the left hand side that has a whole ton of goodies in here. Uh, things to keep me going, whatever the case is, batteries, uh, lighter, red headlamp, so on and so forth. But I left the right hand side fairly clear for my gun to come out. Inside of the plate bags, I have uh, HESCO L210s. And then I put a Cry AVS front flap on the front to keep things slick, and this is very traditional style of setting up a JPC or an AVS, is using these Blue Force Gear uh, Whisper Speed pouches. And I wouldn't typically be running five PMAGs in the front, but what you can do with these, because they're just elastic, is you can shove things like tourniquets and multi-tools down into the front and start building out uh, a little bit more of a versatile system, depending on what it is that your needs are. I do have a Beofang. I know that I need to upgrade some comms, but that's what it is I'm working with. As far as communications, we're really just using it for airsoft milsim kind of stuff, but that Beofang is routed all the way up to my OpsCore amps, and those stay in the backpack uh, built into or mollied onto the JPC so that I at least have them. I always know where they are. If I need to disconnect this, I can always grab a helmet and just plug this into my helmet. So sometimes I'm running ears, sometimes not. And then of course, hydration that runs to the pack as well. Let's quickly look at my LMT rifle. But before I do, I have to mention, if you are building out a plate carrier, a belt, a chest rig, whatever the case is, don't be afraid to go find some surplus gear. So for example, Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, thank you for sponsoring this video. But for those of you that are looking to build out some gear, go look at some of that surplus equipment for two reasons. Number one, you can find it for fairly cheap. And number two, because it's proven stuff, the material, the buckles, the nylon, whether it's zippers or buttons, were designed a certain way and proven over history of warfare. Even if you find some stuff that is a different color pattern or camo than what you were originally looking for, like I did on this 
This pack, I spray painted it. This was a tan pack that was originally designed for some Marine Corps issued, it was Coyote, I'm not even sure exactly what it was, but I painted it green and it still fits the purpose for what my needs were way better. And I didn't have to go spend a bunch of money on a cry precision back panel. I actually went and saved some money and just painted it myself. So check out Americana Pipe Dream. If you guys are curious, we do have a little bit of savings down in the description of this video. This rifle uh, was a gift from LMT, but it is a build I knew I wanted for a long time. And I should have started building out a rifle like this in the first place. So what I would have done is taken a standard lower that I've been shooting for a long time and acquired the upper. This upper is a piston system on an 11.5 barrel. The piston system is a little bit heavy, but it does allow me to change the gas setting on there. Cloud defensive rain 3.0 that runs back to a Surefire pressure pad. I have an at PLC on the front, Surefire SB2, kind of like a, an RC2. Uh, let's see, Aimpoint T2 and a G33 magnifier. There's more doodads on the rifle, but all things considered, this does what I need it to without being wildly heavy or overly complicated. Now, Drew, you have an LMT rifle as well, and you have uh, made some changes to your build. Let's get you on here and you can kind of give them a, a down and dirty on how you built out your LMT rifle. All right, so my build is a little bit different than Josh's. However, the process has been very much the same. I started out with a Smith & Wesson m and 15. I ran that rifle for probably three years before ever upgrading. But whenever I did, I didn't jump directly to what I really wanted. I had a couple of extra AR parts like I'm sure a lot of you guys do. And because I had one part or one rail, I had to build a whole rifle around it. Whereas looking back, I wish I would have just made the jump to something nicer. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money uh, uh, investing into something that wasn't exactly like what I wanted and I would just have to get rid of or sell later. Um, I did after about five years bump up to a BCM, but and I ran that for about five years, but now I have upgraded to the LMT and if I could do it again, or if I had any advice for guys just starting out, I would say get something uh, cheap, affordable, uh, that is still reliable, train on it, get really good with it, figure out what you do and you don't like about it, and have an end goal in mind with the, with what you actually want and then jump right directly to it. So this particular LMT build uh, is set up a little bit different than Josh's. Oh, I can't, I can't show this on camera, can I? Okay, there we go. We just did a little bit of uh, movie magic there for you. It is set up different. Uh, I do have an Aimpoint T2. Uh, on a ScalarWorks 193, by the way, if you're looking for optics and accessories, we have some good friends over at Shooting Surplus who are sponsors of this channel. I've known those dudes for a really long time, genuinely good people who run a good business. And uh, we have a newsletter sign up in the description that you can check out if you want to save on cool things. Um, but with that being said, uh, so I have a B5 stock on here. I um, have a little uh, grip up here in the front, which helps me, you know, wedge it into my shoulder a little bit better. I uh, went with the 193 Scalar Works mount to just make it a little bit easier to aim under nods. And my laser setup is a bit different. A lot of people go with the App PLC. I think that the App PLC is an absolute um, garbage unit. Uh, that gives you very little bang for your buck, way more expensive than it should be. So I went with a CQBL1 with an Echo Arms uh, mount on the side with a, a BE Myers Key G3. And then for the light, I went with a Mod Light OKW. And I see people make mistakes with lights all the time. They buy something cheap, they buy something like a no light or uh, you know something kind of garbage. Streamlight, by the way, is a great budget option. Uh, I wish I would have went Streamlight and then jumped directly to you know an, an OKW from Mod Light. Would have saved me a lot of money and time and effort. Um, but this is pretty much my LMT build that I go with now. With plate carriers, just like Josh, I have a pile of nylon, a pile. And if any of you know, like know, know me, you know I can't stand having clutter and it just drives me crazy. I can't even go to sleep at night when there's, whenever I know there's a pile of nylon that's not sorted or needs to be sold sitting in my garage, it drives me insane. So I started out with a really cheap plate carrier and I ended up buying a bunch of different plate carriers. Uh, only to come to the realization that I should have just got what I wanted all along, which was the JPC 2.0. And no, we're not sponsored by Cry. We went out and we bought these things with our own money. Like we didn't get these for free or anything like that. Um, I, whenever I finally bit the bullet 
and purchased this, which is a little bit of an expensive carrier. I just sold all of my old or a bunch of my old nylon so I could afford this. And so if you've already kind of made these mistakes, if you're in the same boat as like us and you have this pile of just like stuff just sitting around, get rid of it. Someone will want it. Someone can put it to use. And then you can take those uh, resources and put them into what you've wanted all along. And because that's what this video is about. It's not about cool gear. It's not about fancy cry stuff or fancy LMTs. It's about making wise decisions with your finances, with your gear, and being as efficient as possible in that process to get you from zero to hero, if you want to call it that. Uh, with this particular uh, JPC 2.0, I have a Spiritus Mark V chassis, which I've ran on numerous plate carriers, ones that I've sold. Um, and so this just kind of like has been swapped around a lot of times. It's one of my favorite ones because I can attach stuff to the front. It's just, it's excellent. Uh, I opted for the stretch cummerbund. I just prefer it. It feels better to me and uh, it holds my gear really tight and everything so I can put a radio in it. Uh, PTT rigged up usually right in here. Uh, which I can use whenever I actually run a helmet with night vision. I have my ears and my comms and all that stuff. Uh, over here I have a simple tourniquet, um, have a little bit of extra room to store mags or, uh, or like a multi-tool. On the back I have put a, uh, uh, one, of these, uh, one of these cry panels which I'm not actually a huge fan of. Let's be real, it's mostly for LARPing. I mean, after all, there's banger pouches up in here and it's not like we use that for anything other than airsoft or maybe there are some civilian uses for distractionary devices. Maybe that is another video coming up soon. We'll see. But uh, in, down here in this little admin pouch, I'll keep a little things like gloves or eye pro or bandages if I want some extra medical down there. Uh, overall though, it's a pretty simple streamlined build that is actually very comfortable, weighs, you know, the, the weight distribution is pretty balanced and I wish I would have just jumped to this in the first place. Now with that being said, even our cameraman, Nick, has made some of these same errors that we did, you know, acquiring all this stuff. Uh, so check out what he's uh, into now. It's actually pretty rad. All right, so, Luckily, I did not go through the whole process of spending thousands of dollars on kit, going through a bunch of different carrier options and chest rigs and all that stuff. I luckily have some guys close to me that have made those mistakes and have also done a bunch of research themselves as well as the research that I have done and went straight from a beginner plate carrier straight to this Cry JPC 2.0. And as Drew said, yes, it can be an expensive kit to get into, however, if you do some time you know, management, take some time, look online, find some used deals. I got this whole system as you see it, obviously without the mags and then the Benchmade sock P on tax swap for 300 bucks shipped straight to my door. Some guy was just trying to offload it and I got lucky. So pay attention to that, uh, make financially smart decisions and you don't always have to buy brand new. And as far as the rifle goes, I as well went the same route as Drew did initially at my first rifle was a Smith & Wesson M&P 15, probably like most of you. I also bought a bunch of cheap Amazon optics like Sightmark and all that stuff and then the little bipod, you push a button and it shoots the things out the bottom. But you gotta start somewhere. Um, I don't think I would suggest anybody go that cheap now with the stuff that's out like Hollow Sun and all that. Do I regret going that route? At the time, no, because I knew nothing about guns or anything like that. I wanted an AR, I wanted a red dot, I wanted a flashlight and all that cool stuff, you know, a flashlight with the laser built into it, all that fancy stuff. So I would not suggest going that cheap. Obviously, save some money to get into it, get your fundamentals down, learn how to zero the gun, learn how to reload, learn how to clear my functions, all that good stuff. Do some research, talk to some buddies, figure out what they have, what everyone else is using, and stuff that's just been put through the ringer and, and tested. Now, as far as upgrading from that MMP, I went and bought a Aero Precision Lower that has now had three different upper receivers on it. Um, I, I did that because I didn't know what I wanted. Now I do, and I'm like Drew, very minimal. I have one carrier, one rifle, that's it. I can't stand a bunch of stuff. I don't like having a bunch of options. So I'm a perfect example of somebody that went from really cheap stuff to pretty nice things all in one jump. And in the process of that happening, I've probably saved thousands of dollars and probably thousands of hours of my own time. So 
instead of spending a bunch of money and time digging through a bunch of gear, take that time and money and put it into building your fundamentals, range time and ammo. And that's something that you guys should take into consideration as well. So as we wrap this up, let me leave you with two thoughts. First of all, the idea that you're going to go buy entry level parts and then build as you go and continue to add different muzzle devices, triggers, stocks, buffer springs, all those things is just going to take number one time, number two finances, and then number three brain power. You're investing your brain into the wrong thing. Instead, we would encourage you guys to hit the range, go work out in your gear and spend money wisely. So for example, if P mags are on sale, buy some more magazines. If ammo is really expensive, go buy the X300 that you were looking for. If ammo is really cheap, X300s don't tend to fluctuate in price much. They've been fixed at about the same price point for years. So buy the right items at the right time, save your money wisely, and then when it's time to upgrade and go to the best, not the better, but the best option, then do so. Now, maybe you are currently in that in-between phase. This is my point number two. Whether you have really, really high quality stuff, you have a really nice rifle, an LMT, a Knights, whatever it is that your dream build is, and you have a stellar plate carrier and you have a helmet and nods, wherever you are in that spectrum, it doesn't matter if you can't run a mile or three in your kit while carrying your rifle, hike and read a map, you don't have water at home to keep you and your family and friends alive. And there's a lot more important things than just owning the gear and owning the equipment. So again, the two things, number one, save your money and invest your brain, your time and your finances in the correct things until it is time to upgrade. And number two, you have to get some training. That's not negotiable. So with that, the Dirty Civilian team is going to go out in the hundred and something degree weather that we're dealing with right now and we are gonna go get some reps. We also have to thank Wideners. Thank you very much for sponsoring ammo. You guys all need ammo to actually go out there and train. You should also be stockpiling some of your ammo as well. So if you are looking for ammo of most calibers, go check out Wideners. There's a link in the description where you can find the ammo that we are shooting and hopefully save a little bit of money too.